Okay, Carrie, hello. Hello. So we've got Carrie Stay here from Clockwork Moggy and she's going to answer all of your branding questions with the absolute expertise that she's got. We all know she is the girl to do it. So, Carrie, yes. tell us a little bit about your business first. Tell us a little bit about okay. what you do. So, um, I run a business called Clockwork Moggy. I run the business with my partner, Neil, and we're a, we're a branding and digital marketing agency. So, uh, we help build brands um, on and offline and help build their strategy and, yeah, just deal with everything from branding to websites, uh, social media, um, SEO, and everything in between. Perfect. So, first question, let's crack this on. So, where do we start with branding? Where do we start? we start? That's a massive question. It is. So, okay, when I, if I first, uh, if, if someone's got like no branding at all and they come to me and say, I want to start up a new business, I normally ask them why. So, uh, you must do the same thing actually. Why do you want to do anything at all? Absolutely. Like, why do you want to start a business in the first place? Um, what are you doing it for? Who are you doing it for? You know, the whole reason as to why you want to start that business. Uh, basically, as well, what your mission is. So, what do you want to get from your business as well and from your branding? So, you need a clear goal in mind. So, what are you setting out to do? Uh, from that, we'd probably do a bit of like a questionnaire, find out a little bit about how the business is, is going to run, where you want to sort of position yourself in the market as yeah. well. Positioning is very important. Um, so where you want to position yourself in the market, you're going to be high end, you know, more budget based, things like that. So it's, it's getting really down into the nitty gritty of what your brand is going to stand for, its mission, your values and everything like that. So. Good. So a bit of thought before we actually do it about thought, where you yeah. are, where yeah. your position is in the marketplace. Yeah to give you an idea. That's it. So maybe a good idea to look what your competitors are doing as well to give you some yeah. where you are. Yeah, competitor research is always good as well. Um, but a lot of people sort of think that branding means the visual parts, but yeah. that comes later. Once you've got all the other stuff sorted out, it's bigger than then that. you can work on the on the visual parts like the logo and the brand identity and that sort of thing. So yeah. Excellent, well done. Right, next question. So, personal. Are we going to do it personal branding? Do we do it to our name or do we do it to a business name? What would you say there? Okay, so with personal branding, if you're a one-man band, for example, and you want to be the face of your company, then personal branding is the way to go. If you don't want to turn it into like a big corporate event or a chain or something like that, then personal branding is a really good place to start. Um, I know Leslie was sort of quite interested in knowing a bit about personal branding and if she should name her business with her actual name. Mm. So, as we know, for example, she's in the, uh, she wants to do baking. Yeah. Um, so then you're talking about the food industry and a lot of people that are very well known, you've got Jamie Oliver, Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay uh, people like that, they're a personal brand. So it's all about them and yeah. their beliefs and their mission and people who align with them themselves rather than the company. So realistically, it depends whether you want to build a scalable business or a lifestyle business. Exactly. So if you've yeah. lifestyle, there's nothing wrong with your name as being your brand, but if you want to scale it, it needs to probably come away from your brand. Yeah. And I think one of the things there for me, if you look at Jamie Oliver, you know, he built his name on his books and then obviously to brand these restaurants, yeah by the name because he's already got it. That's so it. He built that brand first and he yeah, built, exactly. uh, people knew what to expect from him, yeah. uh, people knew what his missions were, so do you remember he done that um, mm. documentary about getting into schools yeah, and, yeah. and changing um, sort of like what, what school meals were offering and making it more healthy for kids and things like that. People really relate, related to that. Mm. So that's where he got his supporters if you yeah. like, because they um, knew what his mission was and what he wanted to change in the world and all that sort of thing. So people align with what you set out to do. Perfect. So uh, Deborah's asked a question about an industry-based um, governing body. Was was that it? And if yes. she's going to start that up, yeah. does she brand that separately or does she do that with a personal brand? Yes. So um, Deb really needs to brand that separately. 
Um, she's going to be going for a completely different target audience and there's different services behind it, there's different values behind it, it's a completely different entity and when it's, when it's different you will need to sort of brand that away from the company that you have set up already. So we same with that, like ABC is a different brand to um, the Flip Flop Psycho yeah. and different and Ash things. Lawrence. And it's and like you, yes, that's your yeah. personal brand, yeah, you know, personal. Ash Lawrence, Changing yeah. Minds, yeah. Um, that's, your, that's your personal brand, yeah. but then with ABC that's a, a networking yeah. event, so it's completely different. It doesn't really need to be my name that, it's just that's what it's called, ABC, yeah. so it's something completely different. Yeah. So. And it's an entity isn't it, it's, yeah. it doesn't necessarily matter if you're there or not, although yeah. I know you are most times, but yeah. you can put other people in place to run mm. that as well. So, but yeah. your personal brand is the Ash Lawrence brand yeah. where you will need to be the face of that company. And so because we're lifestyle as well, that's why it's me. But although our holding company that holds all of our businesses, probably nobody knows what it's called. Only people to get invoices. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So another question here, when's the best time to rebrand? Okay, so rebranding, you want to look at your branding probably every five years anyway, uh, because in those times, you know, people, um, the way that people buy things changes constantly. So you just got to look at the digital world nowadays, you know, with social media, with SEO, with websites, people want something instant, you know quickly and people's mindset changes as well so you need to be changing with that so you want to look at it well on a yearly basis as well but generally speaking for rebrand i'd suggest every five years or so mm. um again it's not just the visual part so you want to rebrand when you're changing your um services when products have changed um and by that, I mean when you sort of add things, when you add changes to your business, it's gonna make quite a big impact. Mm -hmm. Then that's when you wanna look at rebranding mm -hmm. because you're gonna need a new um, mission statement, for example. You're gonna mm -hmm. need to advertise differently. You're gonna need to, you know, your tone of voice might change uh, com compared to what you're offering. It, yeah. it changes and you might need a different target audience as well. And, and that's the bit, it's, it's actually looking at where your business is going and yeah. to see if it needs it and I think, for me, a classic example for that is we, when we started, we called, it was just Ash Lawrence changing minds and then thankfully Roland came along with the flip-flop psycho bit and that has been our most successful brand because yeah. although it doesn't say anything about what we do, it's recognisable and yeah. you know the hits that we've had from that I, I think it's three years now, as you did that logo three yeah, years I think ago. So, yeah. It's been incredible. We, we've yeah. had so much uh, leverage through that, even to the fact that my business cards now haven't got anything on other than hashtag flip flop psycho. Yeah. So, you know. But that's what branding's all about. Yeah. It's got to be memorable. It's got mm -hmm. to be. It, I say relevant as well, but then. Ours, Clockwork Moggy, says yeah. absolutely nothing about what we do. There's a Clockwork Moggy, or yeah, is that a is. real Moggy? Is this Clockwork <laughs> or is this a real one? Branding. Branding, um, that's it. Get a, cat in the, get a cat in the video. Let's down <laughs> a treat on YouTube. Um, but yeah, um, so what was I going to say about that? I've forgotten now. So it being relevant, you said about Yeah, so relevant. with uh, with branding, obviously, uh, throughout the process, um, it's got it's got to be memorable as well, mm. you know. I mean, we can get away with calling ourselves something like Clockwork Moggy because it's fun, it's quirky. Mm. You know, we want to work with businesses that want to think outside the box. Mm. You know, they want to do something different. They want to stand out in the industry, mm. um, not necessarily follow all the rules. You know, some rules are there to be broken, aren't they? All rules. So if you want to, you know, if you want to break out a little bit, mm. then then that's the sort of people that that we want to work with. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to create a name ourselves as well mm. that was just out there because people, it's a talking point, mm. people come up and just sort of say that's a fun name so mm. you know and that's why it's so important as well to think of your company name. And I think if you can get something that is, does stand out and then you can hashtag that as well yeah. then as you said earlier it has to go through everything it's not just about a logo or the yeah. colours it's the whole package 
and I think um, yeah, that, that's quite important, isn't it? So yes. it's like positioning. It's like a stick of rock. You break it, mm -hmm. and it says, you know, Brighton Pier all the way through. Yep. So everything you do has got the brand in it and touch to the brand. That's it. Yeah, because you have to apply it to absolutely everything. Yeah. And I can't stress that. Shirts anymore. as yep. well. Shirts. shirts. <laughs> that is a lovely colour shirt. Colour here with a colour. Is that, like, is that okay? Yeah, this is a bit like yeah. we have green. Yeah. Not green. Um, but yeah, it, you literally apply it to everything. So even social media, you know, I do see a lot of people um, sort of not carrying their branding through mm -hmm. on social media and they're posting just literally for the hell of it, you mm -hmm. know, it's just to have something there. But social media is great for brand awareness and to get your products out there and, and things like that. Obviously not the only way, you've got your website as well, which is basically, that's where your hub is. I mean, you know, people want to know everything about you and want to know everything that you offer. Your website's the most amazing place for you to do that. Mm. You've got everything and people can see it all in one place. Um, I think social media is great for getting like your brand personality yeah, out there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and your, your values and obviously as well, um, bonding and communicating with your target audience. Yeah. That's what you're going to do. Engaging with them, you mean? Engaging with them. engagement is important. <laughs> Did I know that? So you just said about it all going through. We've got another yeah. question here from uh, Leslie Parker saying about the colours in her brand. Yeah. So she was associated with another uh, company and uh, what does it matter? Yeah, Tell us so about colours and stuff. With um, colours, can uh, they can kind of make or break a brand actually, um, along with the identity and things like that. I can't stress actually how important it is to get that right. Um, colours can evoke emotions. Mm. Um, they can make you feel happy, sad, you know, and, and things like that. So you really need to think about what sort of colours you want to use within your branding. I think Leslie was talking about green specifically. Um, if you're talking about green, you know, green has really great connotations to it. It's natural. Mm. Um, a lot of health products use green. Mm. Um, you know, it's quite serene, isn't it? It's, it's mm. a nice colour. Um, obviously, there's a lot of different tones as well. So if you're using darker tones of green, you're probably going to associate it more with money, wealth, mm. and that sort of thing. If you've got bright, bold green, mm. it's a bit more funky, a bit more mm. light-hearted, a bit more playful. Mm. So it's all in the tone as well. What's that then? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> so in Leslie's case, I think yeah. she was saying because uh, she associated it with sage that was green, yes. and she's changing slightly, it doesn't really matter from her own brand, uh, her own colours? No, because um, basically it doesn't matter about the uh, product you're supplying. Uh, Leslie was talking about people using Zero a lot now, which is yeah. obviously blue, isn't it? Yeah. So then she was thinking of maybe switching to blue rather than using green, which mm. she was relating to Sage. Mm. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. It's what's mm. good for your branding and your values and what's mm. going to give the right impression and the right image across. So you want to appeal to the target audience. You've always got to go back to target audience mm. and what you're hoping to achieve. So no, you don't necessarily need to change the colour mm. just because a new product yeah. has, has come out. It's got to be relevant to your branding and awesome. what you want to put out there. Okay, and then the last question that we've got yes. is less more. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. If you overcomplicate things, it can create confusion, mm. I think. Um, and so if we're speaking in terms of logo, which I think they were, um, less is different, uh, definitely more, I would say. Um, you want something that's just going to stand out on mm. its own. You know, people sometimes have a split second mm. and they'll make judgment on it in a mm. split second as well. Mm. For example, you know when someone walks into a room, mm. networking for example, someone walks into a room and you can't help no, it's but make... Notice that they're wearing shorts <laughs> and flip-flops and think what a scruffy you, person. You can't help but make an instant judgment yeah, on that person, yeah. right? No matter, like, sometimes if they're blonde, yeah. people might think, oh, she might not be as clever as Surely not. someone else. I mean, wrong, but yeah. <laughs> um, but you can't help it. It's mm. human nature and people do that. You make instant judgments. And people literally do the same thing when they look at your branding and the way that you present yourself. Mm and your brand, um, and the experience as well that you give with your brand. Um, that is all part of branding. But, what was the question? Is less more. Less is more. <laughs> is that it then? <laughs> no, I'm not even done yet. I've oh, got loads okay. to talk about. So, yeah, but 
Less is definitely more because you want people, they don't have a lot of time mm. to look at something. People are busy. You want it to stand out, you want it to be instant, but you also want to make that good first impression. If you've got, you know, if you've not put a lot of budget towards creating your logo, for mm. example, and you've done it on Word or, you know, something yeah. like that. That's okay. like, that's a swear word to me. Um, well, but word's a swear word. Word is a swear word, yeah. <laughs> um, but people are going to make judgment on that and they're going to think that if, if you're not looking after your own business and you're okay to put that out yeah. for your own business, mm. then what are you going to do for them? Mm. I, I think that's a, a crucial thing all the way around though. If, if you're not prepared to invest in your business, mm -hmm. why should somebody invest in you? Exactly. I think. You wouldn't. So, you just wouldn't, would you? No. So, so I, you know, taking the time to get the brand right and put yeah. a bit of thought. You know, I've just helped uh, a client of mine. Uh, well, actually, one of them's a member in, in this group and talking about their new business, how they're setting it up. And the three of them have taken quite a bit of time to get the name right yeah. and the strap line to go with that yeah. so that it sticks in people's minds. And yeah. the next thing, and I know they're going to talk to you also about the branding, it's important that the brand goes with that because, mm -hmm. you know, it goes before you and, you know, yeah. it, it stays in people's minds. Yeah, so, strap lines can work amazingly well as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look at the supermarkets, like, you know, Sainsbury's, Ed yeah. Hill Hills. Yeah. yeah, no, it isn't. Yeah. Can't get quicker than a quick fit fitter. Yeah. <laughs> are they really quicker or are they just yeah. branding? That's it. Yeah. That's it. I think a lot of it is branding, but it's really clever. And a slogan or a tagline can really sum up your business in a couple of words. Yeah. And it sticks in people's minds, makes you memorable. Yeah, I, I think it's... Worth spending the time on to get right. To take that time to get that. And ask other people as well. And I think uh, Sarah Brown put a, a really good post in the Mad Group about branding. Yeah. And I think, you know, she's thought hers through and I think, yeah, everybody should do that. So, yeah. so if you used to sum up, Carrie, what would that be? How so would I would say spend the time on it. Spend yeah. the time on getting it right because it is so important. It can make or break a brand if you get it right or wrong. Um, also, I would say look at the experience that you want to give people. Mm. You know, are you going to be looking for quick or are you going to spend time with people? Are you going to build relationships? Um, and that sort of thing. And also, my last point would be, and I've forgotten it, think about what you do differently. Yeah. What do you do differently to everybody else that's doing the same as you or similar to you? Mm. You've really got to find your USP and capitalise on that and yeah. get that out there. And, and I think that's crucial as well. And I think for those that have done the mindset course, we talk about positioning uh, and we talk about the values triangle. And for those of you in the group that would like to know more about the values triangle, I'm happy to go through that with you, or Carrie would as well, because it's crucial, because people say things about themselves, how oh, we care, or as, you know, you might as a lawyer say, well, we're honest, but they're all things that are accepted. You need something that's the extra bit that really does make you different from everybody else. And I think Classic, you did, uh, my son's art sparks company yeah and his logo is on time every time it stands out because yeah. most tradesmen are not yeah so. you're solving a problem yeah, he's actually are. solving Definitely. the biggest problem in his industry which yeah. is you know people don't show up on time uh, people say they're going to turn up and then they you know it's quite an un unfortunately an unreliable industry yeah, so saying and saying that that you solved that yeah. problem i know you're wrong yeah. Go exactly. <laughs> so Carrie, thank you very much. Okay. If people have got, if you've got questions for Carrie, please put them into the group. Ask her. Carrie's done all of our logos. She does all the stuff for us and for my clients. As far as I'm concerned, she is the branding woman on this planet. So <laughs> sort your life out and get hold of her. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Ubish. Yeah. Hi.